Super fish oil, Vesepa or Vesepa, is it better than regular fish oil? Now, I see, here's an interesting thing. I saw a patient earlier this week. He's in his late 50s now, but he's got a family problem and he knows it. He said, Doc, in my 20s, I had triglyceride levels in the 400s. Let me repeat that. Yes, you heard it right. In my 20s, Doc, in my 20s, I had triglyceride levels in the 400s. So what's he been doing? And what's his triglyceride level now? It's like, it's less than 100 now. He's doing great work. Now he is taking a statin. He's taken statins for quite a while, uh, but he's on a fairly low dose statin now. He's taking some fish oil, over the counter supplement. And that's one of the big questions that came up. He said, you know, I haven't taken Vesepa, Vesepa. I always felt like, is it really that much better than getting supplements over the counter? He's taking three grams of fish oil supplements daily. And here's one of the areas where I'd have to say, I don't know. And you know what? The reality is none of us know. The basic indications for Vesepa. First of all, again, Vesepa is the prescription strength fish oil focused entirely on EPA. And you know, EPA and DHA are the oils that you want out of omega-3s you get a lot more stuff in typical fish oils. And in fact, if you've got fish oil supplement, go get the bottle and look at it and you'll see that you may get one or two grams and it says, oh, you get a gram of fish oil, but look to see how much EPA you get in it. Usually less than a third of a gram, maybe even a quarter of a gram. So again, very different stuff. The question then is, well, can I take three or four grams of the routine fish oil supplement? That's actually what I've recommended that people do. And that's what this patient that I'm describing has been doing recently. He's on a low carb diet, what, 20 grams of carbs per day. And so he's been doing great work at keeping his triglycerides, easy for me to say, huh? Triglycerides low. Now, let me go back to the script. I'm starting to wonder a little bit. So let me get back so you can follow me. If you have a tri high triglyceride level, there are ways to lower it. Healthy diet, lose weight, address medical conditions like prediabetes or diabetes. And again, you know, I mentioned the triglyceride over HDL ratio earlier. That's a big, big deal in terms of this issue. By far the most common reason that you see for elevated triglycerides is not a family hypertriglyceridemia like I'm describing in this patient. It is that pre-diabetic, diabetic metabolism. And again, if you're not sure what we're talking about, go back to the triglyceride over HDL series. We just did a couple of videos on it, a couple of YouTube lives on it. In some instances, particularly in dyslipidemic patients, the doctor may prescribe meds like Besipa. And yes, clearly for folks that have significant hypertriglyceridemia, I have recommended and used that. So again, you get back to the patient that we we're just talking about. And the question is, well, should we adjust the statin that he's been taking, maybe lower that some? get in a kinder, gentler, lower dose of statin and add some Vesepa into it. Again, nobody really knows the answer to that. The standard for indication for Vesepa is someone who's on statins and still has a triglyceride level 150 or above. Vesepa, the uh, generic name is icosapent ethyl or IPE. It's a modified form of an omega-3 fatty acid. It's approved for use in the US by the FDA. It was approved in July of 2012 for people with severe hypertriglyceridemia, triglycerides over 500 milligrams per deciliter. The MARINE trial, look it up, it was in uh, the New England Journal. The MARINE trial was one of the watershed trials for this medication. It was approved for expanded use in December of 2019 for preventing serious heart complications in high-risk patients already taking cholesterol-lowering meds. The REDUCE IT trial. Now, I remember talking with several people, this patient earlier this week, and a lot of people, John, for example, when John was working with the channel, many of us were very skeptical about Vesepa when it started hitting the news last year in 2019. We said, again, maybe Big Pharma is just trying to make money, you know, doing what Big Pharma does. Take something that has noticed impact like it did with red rice yeast and saying, or red yeast rice, I always confuse that term. You get something that has an impact 
if you're a big pharma and you do a lot of things to try to improve it and then make it a prescription drug. And that is that exactly what they did with Vesipa? Yes, of course, in many ways, that's what they did. So the real question for us though is not, is that what the big pharma did? Because big pharma did what they're always gonna do. The question is, is it worth it? And if so, in which situations? Outside of the patient that I'm discussing, I've had plenty of patients with triglycerides, two and 300 levels, also having significant plaque, also having a significant diabetes, prediabetes, and also already on a statin. Those are patients for whom there is no question, Vesipa does make sense. How does Vesipa work? It reduces the amount of triglycerides made in the liver. It increases the removal of triglycerides from VLDL particles. Remember, again, we talked about these processes back in the triglyceride over HDL ratio discussions. The exact manner by which Vesipa does this is not known, although there have been several mechanisms proposed. One of them is beta oxidation, that is oxidation of fatty acids within the cytosol of the cell. Another one is just decreasing the liver production. And another one is just decreasing the clotting and bleeding, clotting risk of the blood itself. We're gonna go over a couple of trials here real quick for those of you who like to go over trials. The first one is the marine trial. That was all, all the way back to 2011. So many people think that icosapent ethyl didn't exist prior to 2019 and all the news that it got last year. Well, it's been around longer than that. Marine trial back in 2011 may have been the most pivotal. It was a study that checked the triglyceride lowering level of icosapent ethyl at that point known as AMR 101. And people with triglycerides of 500 to 2000, again, huge levels. They gave them the medication over a 12 week period. The four grams of Vesipa daily reduced triglycerides by 45%. The two grams of Vesipa reduced triglycerides by 33%. It significantly reduced non-HDL cholesterol, ApoB, LPPLA2, plaque 2 those of you who remember the inflammation panel, VLDL cholesterol, remember those are the very short-lived, very low-density lipoproteins. You know, you got HDL, LDL, VLDL, and then IDL, which is intermediate density lipoproteins between VLDL and LDL. It also significantly reduced cholesterol, total cholesterol. So the conclusion at that point of the marine trial was, Vesipa significantly reduced triglyceride levels and improved other lipid parameters without significantly increasing the LDL in patients with very high triglyceride levels. So that was the situation up until last year, 2019. There was no question at that point that this stuff was great for those patients that had really high triglycerides. And again, these are genetic issues, usually triglyceride levels, 500 and above. And once you get over 300, you need to start looking at and thinking about potential for genetic variations in metabolism. Superficial, Vesipa, better than fish oil, reduce it trial. This is the second study. This was in 2019. It was also a groundbreaking study. It showed that it lowers your risk of a life-threatening heart attack or stroke by 25% when added to a statin. It was done on patients with established cardiovascular disease, diabetes, or other risk factors. These are patients that had been receiving statin therapy, had fasting triglyceride levels of 135 to 499. So again, what we've done with the Reduce It trial is go down a significant amount. You don't find a lot of people with triglycerides over 500. You find a lot of people with triglyceride levels 130 and above. They also had LDL cholesterols of 41 to 100. The results were that patients treated with a total of four grams of Vesipa daily had fewer cardiovascular events, 17.2%, compared to those who took a placebo, 22%. The conclusion was that among patients with elevated triglycerides, despite use of statins, the risk of ischemic events, including cardiovascular death, was significantly lower among those who took the two grams of Vesipa or Vesepa, Vescepa, two times daily compared to the ones that received the placebo. And again, you see some information. It's one of their ads. This came out of the New England Journal article on it. Deepak Bot. you'll see Deepak Bot in the little two minute video that we have later on in the show on Vesepa. Now, there's a new trial 
the evaporate trial. And it came from Matthew Budoff. Anybody remember him? He's often known as the father of the calcium score, coronary calcium score. He did a study, it was a small one. He enrolled 80 patients aged 30 to 85 years old with known coronary atherosclerosis and on a stable statin therapy. The patients received four grams of Vesepa daily or a placebo. A multi-detector CT, MDCT scan was done at nine months followed by a final scan at 18 months. Very similar to a CT angiogram, which we've talked about many times. If you don't, if you're not familiar with CT angiogram, just go to our YouTube channel or Google YouTube Ford Brewer CT angiogram. Compared with placebo, Basipa significantly reduced multiple plaque components, including vulnerable plaque in patients with elevated triglycerides and on statin therapy. Now, here's one place where I get a little concerned. I have a little bit of a, I don't believe in the term or concept vulnerable plaque. Basically, and I think that's an overgeneralization of the term. Basically, what they were talking about is soft plaque. Now that I believe in, and there's no question about it. The science is replete with that term, soft plaque. And I believe that's what they're referring to here. Despite the small sample size, Budoff and his colleagues noted benefits of Vesepa or Vesepa on outcomes and plaque reduction as early as nine months with increasing significance by 18 months. And here you see the bar chart. To the best of our knowledge, this is the first elegant marriage of clinical trial results, reduce it, and imaging, evaporate, Budoff said. These data highlight the early and substantial impact of IPE, icosapent ethyl, on the atherothrombotic burden in this at-risk population. And again, you got the link to the study itself if you'd like to take a look. So I'd like to talk with you a minute about the webinar. People don't understand what the webinar is. It's actually a great way to get some access to healthcare that you're just not going to get any other way. You actually get the lab tests yourself for at a local lab, a Quest lab near you, for the inflammation panel and the OGTT and the insulin survey. These are things, inflammation and prediabetes, that your doctor just does not know about. And here's the thing, Harvard Health and many others have said, look, sudden death is not always so sudden. The Hollywood picture that it's a bolt out of the blue is not realistic. It's more like real lightning preceded by clouds, wind, and rain. Stop that metabolic storm before the lightning strikes. And here's where that metabolic storm comes from. It's inflammation, and it has to do usually with prediabetes. So again, we actually get labs, we go over them in the webinar, and then you can start finding out how you can prevent that heart attack others said that you couldn't even predict. We can show you how. Thanks.